so that's a, a great lead in to our to our next speaker uh who um uh, suits you so is a very senior executive in um uh, dbs a uh, major bank here in singapore and uh, a a key um uh, digital bank, global digital bank, and very, very pleased to have you here, uh, Suchu, to to share uh, the the DBS uh, digital transformation uh, story. Can I ask you just to um, uh, we'll, we'll just wait a moment for your uh, slides to come up. Um, can you put it in presentation mode? And I, I know that we had some echo problems before. Um, can you just make sure that your your speaker is is off? You won't hear me. Uh, I'll disappear and I will leave you. Uh, can, you're out of presentation mode again. Can you um, the slides? Can you make them bigger? Okay. Thanks, John. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, so. Um, I, I will leave you to it. Just uh, make sure the, the sound is, is low. Thanks. Okay, cool. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for giving me the, the opportunity to share with you the digital and cultural trans transformation at DBS. So actually, there, there are three key pillars to our transformation. And I will go through these three pillars um, throughout this whole um, sharing in the next couple of minutes. So first one is around digital, becoming digital to the core. Secondly, uh, is uh, how we embed ourselves in the customer journey and thereby making DBS invisible. And finally, and also most importantly, how we can create a 29,000 people startup. And this is actually the, the key pillar in terms of enabling the success of any transformation. We started this journey about six plus years ago uh, in earnest. And it started with uh, the process to acquire deep tech talent the insourcing of all the technology resources that is required to architect and design, as well as engineer and develop all this, the services that we provide to our clients. This involves huge amount of um, reskilling exercise, as well as acquiring uh, new resources from all other disciplines and uh, industries. With those resources uh, in, in, in the bank, actually, we started to uh, look at uh, our architecture and the platform these, these uh, applications are running on. So in 2016, we started to look at how we can uh, cloud enable uh, all the key platforms that we are using to serve all our client base. And uh, clearly the uh, platform as a service is one of the key things, apart from the infrastructure as a service that we have been uh, pursuing for quite some time. Uh, apart from that, we also look at how we can improve the customer journey and embed a, a mindset in terms of client obsession in everything that we design. Then in 2018, we, we did a big reorganization. And in this reorganization, which we call it a platform organization, we break down the silo between the business and technology. Uh, we also brought in some key industry partner to work with us in terms of this particular uh, big reorganization process. And we formed 36 platform across uh, the bank um, to actually run all the key assets that we have, the key product and services that we are uh, providing to all our clients across all the geography. And as of last year, actually, we are in, in a very mature state in terms of running business as tech and tech as business. And we started to look at how we can accelerate our transformation and create an exponential bank. Uh, apart from that, we also started to leverage AI and data at scale in everything that we do and use for, for our clients as well as our employee. So in terms of the digital to the core, we started a program code named Gandalf. And Gandalf, those of you who has uh, watched a lot of the rings will know that is the wise man who lead you to the North Star. This is a code name we use to guide uh, all the tra technology transformation at the DBS. And it comprises of uh, five components that is uh, presented in this uh, uh, pie chart here. Uh, firstly, is around the shifting of our mindset from project to platform, moving from a short-term mindset to a, a infinite mindset in everything that we create, in every single product that we are delivering to, to our clients. 
um, and from a finite thinking to an infinite thinking, from a fixed budget, fixed cost, uh, fixed timeline, fixed scope type of mindset to a uh, ever evolving um, kind of uh, product uh, model in terms of uh, how we prioritize what to be built next for any product. So the evergreen model is what uh, we we are we have been adopting. The second key pillar to, to this whole um, program is uh, high performing agile teams. How we can create a truly autonomous team that is uh, self-organizing, that is adopting the agile mindset and culture in everything that uh, we do and we prioritize. Third one is actually a very important pillar of enabling uh, the technology transformation, which is the automation of everything we do not only for our clients and our operations, but uh, more importantly for technology. And in here, we focus on the CICD, the release automation, the self-provisioning by, by the developers in terms of the environments that, that, that they need, uh, as well as the adoption of um, cloud. The fourth pillar is around the architecture of all the applications that uh, we, we are uh, providing to support all the products that uh, the, the products that we uh, sell to our customers, and in here the microservice architecture pattern is uh, one key one, enabling us to be able to evolve uh, independently and uh, quick is one of the key uh, principle behind all the architecture pattern that uh, we have been adopting. API first is is another key one, uh, moving from a model of service oriented architecture to an API first model has been an agenda for us uh, for quite many years now. And adopting a blue-green deployment model and DevOps is also key thing in terms of designing a modern system. And finally, I think the most important one is actually the breaking down of the silo between the business and tech, as I mentioned just now. <laughs> How we can ensure that uh, all silos are broken and everyone has the same shared objective in what we are supposed to be delivering, whether it is between business and tech and or within the tech itself, between the dev and, and the ops, um, how we can organize in this manner to reduce the friction as well as to ensure the alignment of priority has been a key uh, success factor for this whole transformation. <laughs> so talking a little bit about the architecture, we, we aim to achieve the highest level of agility in both the architecture, which is one big component, as well as the culture and organization of uh, technology so in terms of architecture, uh, we are all very familiar with the uh, infrastructure as a service, the, the leverage of commodity hardware, the, the uh, virtualization of uh, you know, the, the machines and, uh, and so on. Uh, we are also familiar with the platform as a service uh, where things uh, can be run uh, more uh, in a container basis and uh, we, we are abstracting uh, the OS uh, for, for the applications. And finally, I think, you know, um, to enable the highest level of agility, we need to look at uh, truly re-architecting our application architecture to one of microservices um, to make sure that actually as a developer, we do not need to bother about, um, you know, the, um, the impacting other components that is not being uh, affected in anything that we do and uh, focusing our effort only in terms of the business logic. So that, uh, you know, we believe that uh, depending on the, the needs of the use cases, uh, we will adopt a different level of um, architecture pattern, whether it's uh, IAS or PaaS or microservices in uh, the architecture that we are building. From a culture and organization perspective, um, obviously, um, you know, the agile practice uh, started uh, originally in terms of um, developers adopting uh, agile method of, uh, of working. Uh, slowly, actually, this uh, evolved to, you know, having a continuous integration flow to make sure that uh, everything is integrated on a daily basis. And then, you know, the, the continuous delivery to ensure that we can deploy continuously. And I think the true uh, test of Agile is where we, we have the you build, you run, and there is no uh, silo in between the build and, and the deployment, as well as the, the operate. So that, uh, again, is the different level of agility in terms of um, your practice, the culture, and how you organize your technology team that will give you the different level of uh, agility that you need for the different type of application that uh, you are driving. 
So more in terms of the uh, architecture pattern, right? We, this is a pattern that we have been looking at and uh, you know aligning towards for quite some time now. So on the left hand side, you can see the traditional stack where you have customized proprietary hardware, expensive commercial software, and we, we are pretty familiar with this because a lot of time if you buy uh, any um, application, uh, you you will need to actually um, adopt uh, whatever stack that is uh, prescribed by the application. So, you know, and, and in terms of the architecture pattern, typically you, you may have a monolith architecture pattern if, if you have actually onboarded those apps uh, for, for many, many years now. The next level of uh, agility is around what we call, call the cloud ready, where you are actually virtualizing the, the hardware uh, with, uh, with VM. Uh, I think this is the lowest level of agility and, uh, you know, is uh, commonly adopted uh, uh, in the industry uh, these days. The next piece we, we talk about um, actually cloud optimized, how we can run using open source software, uh, open source database, open source uh, operating system and so on, and ensuring that we have the some level of automation in terms of uh, all those com components to enable us to be able to deploy um, and provision easily. And, and finally, to enable the highest level of agility, we believe we need to move towards a cloud native model and, and here, actually, I think a, a slight version of, a, you know, adaptation of cloud is actually just merely containerizing your application and, you know, abstracting your, your OS. This will give you some level of agility, but, um, you know, it's uh, still quite restricted because your, your services and your application are still not really uh, modular, right? And microservices architecture pattern uh, is, is the one that I think, you know, require re-architecture um, and it is an opportunity if you are going to build a application from scratch that you you would like to uh, you know ensure high, highest level of agility that you adopt a, a microservice architecture pattern but uh, you know the microservice architecture pattern is something that um, uh, you know requires um, the the relevant uh, platform uh, to be managed uh, efficiently it's not something that you can uh, manage um, easily using a, you know a traditional um, deployment on a IAS for example so where we are Today, in terms of DBS, um, as I mentioned, we have uh, started this journey for quite some time now. And in terms of the virtualization of the hardware, we are at uh, actually uh, more than 97% right now in terms of what uh, we are hosting our application on. And to be as exponential, to be able to scale exponentially and to be able to compete with uh, our modern uh, competitors, uh, most of them from uh, um, tech background, we aim to be cloud native for all the new uh, build. And for all the existing uh, components that we have that uh, is uh, you know, traditionally built as a monolith um, for many, many years ago, we want to aim to at least uh, be containerizing uh, those apps. And what we hope to achieve here is uh, the five uh, S over here. Uh, firstly, on the speed to have a fully automated deployment process so that the effort and the lead time is minimize as much as possible, uh, as well as to enable fast experimentation. Second piece is around stability. Stability is very key because it ex, ex, uh, affects the experience of our clients. And in here, we, we want to design systems that are self-healing, that has zero downtime in terms of deployment, that are fully automated in terms of the testing, that is able to auto-scale. And we leverage the chaos engineering actually very, uh, aggressively in terms of making sure that, um, you know, every single failure points are tested thoroughly and uh, the expected behavior is also uh, what uh, we, we will be seeing. And finally, in terms of uh, reducing the manual error and manual effort, our SRE team actually focus a lot on uh, removing the toil that they have um, every single day. In terms of scalability, we want to be able to pay per use. Um, we want to be able to scale with uh, zero lead time and zero manual effort. And this, this is important because, uh, you know, for various uh, campaigns, um, one and picks and so on, uh, you want to be able to, you know, scale up and down easily without any lead time. Uh, truly elastic cap capacity as well as uh, instrumentation. For savings, um, again, the elasticity is important. You want to be able to go up, but then you want to be able to come down uh, quickly as well and so that you are not uh, stuck with uh, the cost. 
And you know, you, you also want to be able to spin up any number of test environments so that you can actually test everything thoroughly and uh, bring them down when you don't need them. Uh, this will help us to deliver high quality products. Um, and in terms of savings, again, uh, you know, the, the ability to experiment, to, to have access to a wide variety of things that you can uh, leverage uh, quickly without the overhead uh, is also another important thing. And, and finally, security is a very important part uh, of the whole agenda. We want to be able to patch um, uh, quickly without uh, any, any kind of uh, delays for any uh, gaps that we are seeing. So with Cloud Native, we have dramatically improved our time to market and uh, release cadence as well as stability. So we have seen the results here as, a, you know, from a time to market perspective, we have reduced uh, the, the, from six months to less than four weeks for major releases. In terms of cadence, the, the lead time has been reduced by 10 times by the leveraging of uh, actually platform as a service uh, to about three hours and the effort to, to about two hours for, for major releases. And provisioning of infrastructure, uh, which uh, once upon a time took a, a, a week, now is actually instant uh, and you know controlled by the developer themselves. And finally, in terms of stability and maintainability, we have zero downtime in terms of uh, deployment of, of everything and the stability due to the quality that uh, has been embedded also um, ensures that we have a zero down, downtime experience. The second piece to the agenda is uh, how we embed ourselves in the customer journey. And here, actually, uh, API uh, plays a very important role. So in 2019, actually, we launched the first fully virtual wealth management account opening capability in Hong Kong as part of our response to the digital banking agenda in Hong Kong, whereby our customers, the new customers uh, for our treasures uh, segment can open their multi-currency accounts and the wealth ma management capabilities anytime, anywhere using the mobile app that we have. And this is through the API connectivity we have uh, within many services that is required within the banking uh, applications that we have, as well as with many um, third parties out there that we are leveraging for many of the capabilities we have to use in uh, this particular uh, product that uh, we have uh, launched out in, in that year. Second piece, you, I think hopefully all, all of you are familiar with our slogan about wanting our customer to live more and bank less. Uh, we have actually embedded DBS in many of the episodic journey of our customers, be it in the property, whether you are buying a property or renting a property, buying or selling a car, traveling once upon a time before COVID, um, buying electricity, and uh, finding the right um, education and tuition agency for your custom, your 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 family. Um, DBS is embedded via API with all of these uh, partners of ours to ensure that your effort in doing all of this is as seamless as possible and your financial uh, needs in supporting all this agenda is uh, as seamless as possible. In 2017, actually, we launched a, a platform uh, and exposing a lot of the API within the bank with the intention to invite the developers out there to start building and help us to reimagine the experiences that we can uh, provide to our customer. Uh, that has been a great uh, great exercise and great uh, uh, learning experience for us. And we continue to grow this platform, which has now more than 1,000 live API um, and connected to more than 700 plus uh, partners today to continue to actually embed uh, DBS in a lot of the activities that we are providing uh, ourselves as well as uh, you know the, the ecosystem partners of ours to help us to actually reduce the friction that is uh, experienced by our customer in every single thing that they have to do with the bank. The other key agenda is around the leveraging of data and AI. And we have um, launched what we call the intelligent banking to help our customer uh, perform all their everyday banking exercise in an effortless manner. Uh, whether it is in terms of uh, paying of your credit card bills, in terms of tracking funds, and you know, be alerted in terms of the irregularities of uh, charges in your account and so on. We want to be your financial concierge so that you don't have to spend too much time worrying about your day-to-day -day financial activities. And in terms of uh, customer servicing, um, our call center actually uh, leveraged a lot of AI and data to make sure that uh, we are monitoring the journey our customer is experiencing 
while they are using all of our assets, whether it's the mobile banking or internet banking. We use the data here to actually enable us to be able to proactively service uh, their needs, as well as to provide the necessary intervention that might be required. Uh, in addition to that, actually, we use all this data to help you help us to fine tune uh, the, the design, the UI UX uh, of all the assets that uh, we are giving out to our customer. And the last piece, as I mentioned, is around the culture. This is uh, the most difficult and the most important piece in terms of any um, transformation. So I've talked about how we are customer obsessed uh, in what we do, uh, leveraging of data. The next piece is around three other pieces uh, in terms of how we encourage people to take risks and to be willing to experiment, how we adopt the agile culture and how we embed a learning organization mindset in every single person within the, the bank. <laughs> so in 2017, um, we decided to disrupt the way we hire and we launched a, a hackathon called the Hack to Hire. In this, um, we managed to recruit, <clears throat> uh, use a different method to recruit the software talent uh, that we need, and most importantly, the, the modern software tech talent that uh, we were needing in quite big quantity because of the aggressive uh, transformation we started uh, back in that year. So this uh, is actually a four-stage uh, exercise where um, participants will be asked to do a coding challenge online, uh, followed by a behavioral uh, assessment, and then uh, a 48 hour hackathon if you uh, are filtered through the whole uh, coding challenge, uh, whereby in the DBS uh, tech mentors as well as the participants in the hackathon actually get to interact with each other so that we can um, understand uh, the the, I mean, for the participant to understand DBS better in terms of how we work and for us to also understand the, the participants better in terms of um, how they behave uh, when they are in an uh, unfamiliar environment, working with strangers, uh, working to solve a problem and, and so on and so forth. And finally, you know, it, the, uh, the event will end with a, a same-day uh, interview and a same-day job offer. So through this event, which has been uh, very successful for us, uh, we have attracted more than 60,000 registration over the three years and invited about 3,000 hackers into many of the hackathons that we have um, organized and we have actually made uh, more than 700 plus offers uh, over the years uh, for all the uh, the roles that uh, we were looking to hire across uh, Singapore and, and um, in other countries. Uh, in 2019, we decided to launch a global hackathon to invite ideas to uh, from everyone around the world in terms of how we can uh, reimagine banking, uh, in terms of the leverage of AI in uh, retail banking, in insurance, in hyper-personalization of the experience for, uh, for our customer, in terms of our role in sustainability and uh, many other uh, key themes that uh, we had in this hackathon. It has been a wildly um, exciting as well as a su successful event because we managed to attract participation from more than 67 countries, uh, as you can see here. Um, and we ended with uh, more than 50 ideas that uh, we have taken forward. And the final uh, event was actually in Singapore. We flew uh, many of these uh, finalists to, to Singapore, uh, where they went out to the streets to uh, get ideas from people on the streets in terms of their, uh, their suggestion and proposal. Uh, and we, we, we awarded uh, uh, to the four, five top ideas that uh, uh, that has uh, actually shown the the best uh, in terms of uh, the experiences that uh, that we were hoping for our customer. So this is uh, another experiment that we have uh, actually uh, leveraged in terms of um, changing the the way we uh, uh, we work and uh, how we decide what we are going to build for our customer. The other piece is in terms of um. Uh, how the teams work, right? Um, in order to be truly um, successful, I think um, each team needs to have their own dream. Uh, they need to have their culture. So um, this you know, page actually shows you some of the key components, how we can ensure that there is a joint uh, KPI between the, all the teams that is part of uh, the agenda, how we can co-locate everybody uh, and how we can make everything visible. Uh, so the, the, the presence of wall white walls are, are quite important in at DPS because you want to make sure that uh, everything is uh, visible and uh, transparent. Um, and for for these days, actually, we try to leverage the always-on video 
uh, to ensure that people, uh, although they are remote, they are still um, able to to see each other uh, through the uh, through the video that uh, is uh, is always on. Uh, the the other key thing is in terms of uh, priorities. The single product backlog is a is a very important thing. Uh, having a living roadmap and uh, having a, a gig economy type of uh, culture of working is another key feature of how how we work. On the product, we want to emphasize it around the engineering excellence, the, the architecture and, and the design of all the things that, uh, that, that we build. And, and finally, the, um, the operational excellence is a very key piece as well, uh, you know, in terms of what we provide in, in production, the quality and uh, uh, how all of these are functioning when it, it goes live. Uh, many different dashboard uh, is, is present as well as the, the, the uh, CI to CD pipeline and uh, everything that um, that's being built is uh, part and parcel of uh, how we work. And, and finally, uh, having a coach to ensure that uh, everyone um, will be able to get the necessary help that uh, that they need. So, so as mentioned, uh, uh, you know, we C go C about C changing C the culture uh, by doing mm -hmm. state of teaching. So, Chu, we have we have several questions. Um, so, I, I I know we're we're sort of limited on time, but I would like to address some of the questions that we have in in the chat. And you've alluded to a couple of of, of answers to these. But uh, one one key question that's uh, that's come from from the audience is, what is the biggest challenge you face in um, in taking on this this transformation? Because I can imagine, and and, and I can imagine in a large organisation that's heavily regulated. Uh, there would be all sorts of questions. Well, you know, the, will the regulator allow this? Um, if we touch this system, it might break. Um, don't change something that um, that's, that's, that's working. What, what are the sorts of things that you've had to do in order to get your entire organisation behind this uh, this transformation? I think the uh, the senior sponsorship is uh, is one of the most important thing. You you need to have um, alignment from the top. Um, after that, you you need to make sure that uh, you have a culture that encourage uh, you know taking taking risks and uh, uh, be being willing to fail and uh, having people who have the courage to to drive a a transformation and uh, bring others along. Um, so to to me, I think sponsorship from the top as well as uh, the grit to uh, to to actually take on something uh, big and uh, transformational is is key. Uh huh. So I guess that has to come from the leadership because if if people see uh, people being punished for t for taking a risk that didn't come off, then then they're not going to put their hands up them themselves. So I guess that's that's pretty important. The the other questions are a little bit more technical. So um, questions about well, are there industry standard um, uh, guidelines that you're following in regarding to business practice capability? Uh, and uh, and API uh, API standards, or what what are the sorts of uh, things that you seek to align with? We have a, a very clear uh, reference architecture, as well as uh, enterprise architecture um, uh, guardrails that's out there for for the entire bank. So you know all of these um, you know architecture pattern uh, tool set that we use um, um, uh, based on something that we have. Uh, Look at and uh, actually research and to make sure that the the guardrails in terms of security and and so on are all in place. Uh huh. So I, I guess like any good governance is designed to make it easy for people to do the right thing, but hard to do the the wrong thing. Yes, I think the guardrails are there. Um, you know, at, in all cases, we try to uh, you know create a platform as a service. So we we leverage yeah. you know various uh. Um, platform as a service in the market, or you know, platform as a service that we created ourselves, actually. Uh -huh. So, but still, sort of innovating within those those guardrails that, that you have. Yes. So those are uh, those guardrails are and platforms are meant to uh, actually make the developer go faster, so that they can focus mainly on the business logic rather than you know uh, investigating or bringing in or, or dealing with infrastructure or, or so so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Suchu, for for those uh, insights. Uh, I, I think just from the the questions that we've uh, had in in the audience, uh, it's very very clear that there's been a lot of a uh, lot of interest in in the DBS story, and you've you've outlined that uh, that very well. Thank thank you very much for sharing.
Thanks, everyone.